What's up, everyone? My name is Matthew Dale. I am here to help you play better, sound great, and understand more. And let's talk cases today. Specifically, what is the best case that you can get for the FM9? And is it uh, this thing? This is the Pelican 1555. There is a lot of stuff kind of going on in here. Obviously, it is big enough where it's holding more than just my FM9. So let's open it up and uh, I'm gonna tell you why I think this is a really, really, really good option for the FM9. All right, so here's the Pelican case. Again, you can see the model number is 1555. Uh, made in the USA, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can see I've already got some swag on it. Uh, you know, like my PRS sticker, my Strandberg sticker, my own sticker, shameless plug. Um, the string Joy strings and Morningstar, although I don't have a Morningstar in this case, I recently got a hold of the MC6 Pro, which is a fantastic, fantastic mini controller. Uh, more videos to come about that in the future. And that sticker just fits perfectly in this slot here. So I really couldn't pass that up. But let's crack this thing open and see what we got. All right, so flip this around here. The latches are kind of like a press in here on the thumb and then lift. So I'm gonna do that on all three of these heavy duty latches. Of course, notice we've got some lock points here. There's also a space down here for, I've got like a business card with my information on it. There's that valve for keeping everything uh, equally pressurized inside the case, since this is a waterproof case. And if we open it up, here is how I have everything laid out. We can see the FM9 is right here, kind of towards the bottom uh, of the case. I got some storage here uh, near the top, near the handle. Again, look how big and grippy this handle is. This is really substantial. It kind of pops down and latches into place so it's not flopping all over the place. Again, this is the pull and pluck foam. So if I just sort of zoom in here and just sort of manipulate this foam, you can see where it would uh, want to give way. I've got it nearly to the point there's one layer of foam on each side, so it gives me a little bit extra layer, but you can see I like having this amount of foam kind of all around the unit. I think that's going to make it really nice and safe. We've got padding up here, and as nice as this is, I think the uh, interesting stuff is really happening uh, on the bottom underneath the FM9. So let's take a look. So I just pulled the FM9 out. And if we take a look down here, I've got in this case, um, everything that I would need to set up at a gig. So first and foremost, I've got my in-ear monitors, my 64 audio A4Ts. Uh, I, and I've got right below it, uh, an IEC power cable, and it's great to have one of these in a case that is ready for travel because I always seem to forget my IEC cable. Luckily, uh, these devices are powered with an IEC, um, and that makes it a lot easier to find a cable. You're not looking for proprietary 9-volt barrel jack you know, for anything else. You can just use a cable off of a light or anything else that has that type of jack because the power supply is internal to the FM9. While we are talking about fractal stuff and the FM9 stuff, if you are interested, you should all download my blocks library. You can do this for free. Download some of my favorite sounds for yourself. You can just head over to matthewdale.com slash blocks and download that free library. So in addition, I think this is my favorite part. In addition to my in-ears and a dedicated cable that I keep in the case, I've got not just an EV2, but an EV1 in this case. So if I need to run two pedals, I have them here, or I can sort of choose whichever one uh, fits the bill or fits the stage that I'm on in any uh, given location. I love the feel and the size of the EV1. I think it's my preferred uh, unit, my preferred go-to pedal for how, uh, how big of a footprint it is, how well my foot sits on it, um, and just the overall usability, over, overall feel of this. I like the EV2 as well, it's just I would prefer this. Uh, and it's really, it's so big, it's really difficult to like find a good spot for it. So this case has enough, enough depth where if I pull this out, you can see it is a pretty nice fit. There's still a layer of foam underneath here. You can see all the little detents from the feet since it lives in this case most of the time. But there's still a layer of foam down here, and um, I would have to like probably move that layer of foam to get this back in, but it'll slip back in and ride nice and snug as a bug 
in a rug, I guess, in there, and then I could put this top layer back on. I might remove some of this section to make that less of a uh, task. I don't know about that yet. Um, but anyway, I've got my EV2, which is a lot easier to get to, and there's another storage space if I just want to travel with the EV1. I've got my wireless units over here as well, and then down sort of in this vertical pocket, I've got everything that I would need for, here's a TRS for an EV unit, here is another TRS for the other EV unit, and I think down here, I've also got my charging cable for the wireless. So again, like I said, it's everything that I would need to set up at a gig. I would have my uh, guitar cable if I'm running like, you know, a regular guitar cable as opposed to the um, wireless guys. I would put that like in a guitar case. And generally the places that I play when I'm plugging into a system already have XLRs for me to plug in. Now, obviously, Pelican isn't the only manufacturer of roto-molded cases uh, like this one. Uh, however, they do have a pretty legendary name. But let's take a look at just some other options that we have available to us. So here's the 1555. It is roughly uh, at the time of this video, you know, who knows what's going to happen with prices. But at the time of making this video, this is $262.95, $263, uh, including the uh, foam. If you get no foam, then it drops the price, yeah, to $220. Obviously, you'll probably want the foam if you're going to be putting your FM9 in there. As mentioned before, I really like the dimensions of this case. Um, I think it's uh, big enough. It's not too big, but it's also not too small. It offers a lot of um, space between the things that I have in there. So the biggest dimension to pay attention to, I think, is going to be the interior length, making sure that the case is long enough to accept uh, the size of the FM9. And this comes in at a very comfortable 23 inches. I like this a lot. Another option that if we take a look at is the i-series. This is, again, a 23, if we go down to the specs here, this is another 23-inch interior length. This is very similarly sized to the Pelican, although I don't think it has quite a as robust or uh, uh, grippy of a handle as the Pelican does, but otherwise it's going to be very similar if we just sort of take a look. I have another case that's an SKB i-series, and I really like it, and this one comes in very similar similarly priced at 250 with the included foam. Now, another company that I've seen come up on like my Instagram feed and all that stuff is a company called Condition One. Uh, I don't have one of their cases. I've never tried out one of their cases, but they seem uh, like a pretty uh, interesting player in the game, I guess. They have something that's kind of weird though. So in the interior length, if I filter all these down to interior length, they have a big gap between 21.98 inches and then we go all the way up to 28. So there's no like 23, 24, 25 inch interior length case. So even though this is 209 and this actually is a little bit deeper, it's a little bit bigger of a case. It has um, wheels on it so you can wheel it around. It's got like a suitcase style latch. That is kind of a nice feature. Um, I don't know if this price, okay, so 239 with the pluckable foam, if we see it here. Um, I don't know if it would be long enough. I mean, we're cutting an inch out of it. You might be able to squeeze the FM9 into it. I think it would be a little bit risky and you would risk a little bit of some extra padding and protection, but it might work. Now, if we go back to something that will sh for sure fit, this is a much larger case. This is um, 28 inches on the inside, 28 and a half nearly, 31 inches overall length. Again, this has um, the suitcase handle, uh, and the it's much deeper. Like I said, this is a much larger case. Pluckable foam, though, uh, on this case, like you're you're looking at three hundred and thirty dollars, which is I think there's like a big gap missing in the length conversation here uh, with the Condition One cases. So maybe not the best option for an FM9. As I've probably already mentioned a lot in this video, I really like this case. It really hits home on kind of like the three big things for me, uh, which are probably going to be three very big things for you 
as well. Durability, overall durability of the case, how well it protects the protectability of the case for the valuable stuff that's inside, and waterproofness. You know, there's times when I'm outside setting up at a gig, storm clouds roll in, I'm not near my car, so uh, I can't just throw my stuff in my car, or I might not even be near a shelter if I'm kind of playing, you know, outside at a gig somewhere. So being able to throw your gear into something that is for sure going to be waterproof, I think is a big deal, or at least it is a big deal to me. But this is not the only means of transporting and storing an FM9 around the place. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What uh, what cases are you guys using? Leave me a comment in the space below. Don't forget to download my blocks library if you want to try out some of my fractal tones for free for yourself. Just head to matthewdale.com slash blocks. I am here to help you play better, sound great, and understand more, and I will see you guys in the next video.